Welcome to Three Steps to Sketch for Basic Sign Graphs. So these are going to be graphs in the form y equals a sine bx. And so the, this method works for basic sign graphs. If you have some shifting going on, we'll need to make an adjustment to this method, so check out that video later on. All right, so the first step is to find your essential information. We first want to identify a and b from that equation on the previous screen. So A is going to be your vertical stretch factor, just like with all your other general functions, but we can also call it for our sine, the amplitude, if you take the absolute value. And amplitude is just a measure of distance, which is why we keep it positive. Another way to measure the amplitude is just to look at a given graph and from the midline up to a peak or from the midline down to a minimum or to a valley, that will be the same number, the same distance as your amplitude. Okay, so B is a horizontal transformation. Um, if you simply look at B in the equation, it tells you how many cycles of your sine graph should happen between zero and two pi. And we'll use B a lot as we graph equations and analyze them. Okay, so here B is again, we use it to calculate the period. So to find the period of any sine graph, all you need to do is calculate 2 pi divided by b. Okay. And again, that goes back to b is a horizontal transformation, so it's affecting the length of a horizontal cycle, or the period. All right, we also want to have scale labels so that we can create really nice, neat graphs. You can do this any way you want. You could choose any scale label, but with our three steps to sketch method, we like to do it the same way every single time, which guarantees us a really nice graph. So, for your horizontal scale, and this is what you'll count by to label your horizontal tick marks, all you need to do is take your period and divide by four. So we're going to break our graph up essentially into four equal pieces. And these four pieces will be our essential points or our key points for graphing. And so that makes it really nice. Every important point should fall on a labeled tick mark. Okay, for our vertical scale labels, usually you can count by ones. Um, another good way to do it is the absolute value of A. Okay, so we're really just going back to that vertical stretch factor. We'll count by that. And that's how we'll label our vertical tick marks. Okay, on to step two. Plot your key points. So for sine, you'll have a pattern. And for a basic sine graph, so one that's not shifted, not reflected, you're going to have the pattern zero, max, another zero, min. Okay, so let's look at that a little closer. The first zero for sine, you get to start at zero, zero. Think back to the fact that you know if you're evaluating an exact value, the sine of zero degrees or the sine of zero radians is zero. Okay, so our graph starts at the origin when it's not shifted. Okay, from there, you'll move over to your next horizontal tick mark to the right. And you'll plot a point that's the x-coordinates, that horizontal tick mark, and the y-coordinate is simply your value of a. Okay, back to the x-axis again for another zero. So you'll plot this zero at your second horizontal tick mark, comma zero, of course, for the y-coordinate. And the final part of your pattern is a minimum. So that will happen at your third horizontal tick mark to the right of the origin, and the y-coordinate will just be the opposite value of a. All right, so just a quick note, this pattern that we talked about, zero, max, zero, min, this is when A is greater than zero, so no reflection over the x-axis. If you do have a reflection, that's completely fine. Just know your pattern will actually adjust so it'll be zero minimum, zero maximum. And that should make sense because here's when, let me do a quick sketch, when A is zero, you go, A is greater than zero, you go zero, max, zero min, so your basic sine graph looks like that. Okay, and if A is less than zero, you just have quick adjustment, so you reflect the green graph, and then it ends up looking like this blue graph. So the pattern goes to zero, min, zero, max. So you just have a reflected version of your sine graph. All right, so we've done step one. That is finding the essential information. Step two, we are plotting our key points. 
And now we can move to step three. Sketch and repeat. So in general, let's just get a, another nicer idea of what this should look like. So you'll have found your essential information. You'll have identified your period. You'll know your scales and how you're going to label your tick marks. Um, so let's say we know that we're going to have one, two, three, four. So that should be the length of your period, whatever it ends up being. And then we know our vertical labels will be A and negative A. So this is assuming A is positive. You'll have plotted your pattern. So since we assumed A is positive, we know we'll go zero max, zero min, so then we can sketch out our graph and we can repeat for as many cycles as we need. So you could continue your cycle to the right. So zero max, zero min. Okay, of course you can keep going to the right. You can also go to the negative part of the horizontal axis, count four tick marks away from where you began your green cycle. That way you have room for another full pattern because remember trick graphs are simply cyclic or repetitive. So we have zero max, zero min, and we meet back at that zero that starts the next cycle. Okay, so of course you can keep going, make a really nice graph, get as many cycles as you need. Three steps to sketch any basic sign graph. Check out some of the examples um, and you'll master this in no time.